So this morning we're going to do a live <clears throat> live stream in response to President Nigren's State of the Navajo Nation address. We are here in Wonder Rock at Sagahotsana. As you can see, the monument behind us for which this place is named. <laughs> I'm here with Eleanor Smith, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself real quick before we get into our first topic this morning. Oh, yeah, I've been here with Eleanor Smith, and 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 I've been here with Eleanor Smith, Thanks, Eleanor. Um, so we have just this one little mic here that we're going to be passing back and forth. Um, I just want to say a few things uh, before we start. Yesterday mor uh, morning, uh, our president of the Navajo Nation, Blue Nigren, was given, was first up on the agenda. It is the winter session right now. Um, it is January 23rd, 2024. And this week, the Navajo Nation Council is in its winter session. So yesterday, Boone Nigren uh, was first on the agenda, and he uh, went up to give the State of the Navajo Nation address. And there are a couple of things that he mentioned in his oral address. Um, he did give uh, this same address <clears throat> to some communities um, about a week ago, and he was able to cover uh, a bit more information there. Um, but yesterday, um, he was able to cover um, a couple of things, including veterans housing, ARPA, uh, a couple of other things he mentioned was um, working with uh, some of the departments and his division leaders. And then, of course, uh, there was a lot of questions coming from the council delegates regarding different things, including uh, working on during um, uh, when the road conditions are not are are are, are icy, or working during um, um, snowy days and things like that. Working with um, the uh, senior citizen centers and things like that across the Navajo Nation. And the thing that we were listening out for as members of community groups and environmental organizations and environmental justice organizations such, such as Twins Renane, is we were listening out for some of the issues that we were concerned with. And unfortunately, I didn't hear any of those. And um, I wanted to um, talk to some community group, the leadership in the community groups out there, and ask them about what they felt like um, they should have heard from the president of the Navajo Nation. And so first up, um, I have Eleanor, and she introduced herself, and she is working on hydrogen. So I want to give her some time to talk, uh, give you a little bit of background about hydrogen, and then we'll um, ask some questions. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Eleanor, and go ahead. Okay. Um, hydrogen. Hydrogen. <laughs> As zole, do halchinigi, do, um, nichte as zole, um, I'm sorry, okay, nichte the cone, I knew I was missing one word, nichte as zole, the conigi, do halchinigi, that's the way they named it in Navajo. So it meaning that it's a light, light, um, substance that does, it's actually lighter than air and, uh, it does not have a smell, but it is highly, highly explosive. So when it's in its natural, when it's in its pure state as hydrogen. So hydrogen is everywhere. You know, we, if you look at water, the elements, if they in in science they say H two O, so H G A stands for hydrogen, not kegel. Ah, oh, it's oh, hydrogen. Ado O G A it stands for oxygen. 
So H2O Dechne. So what these companies want to do is take apart these elements. And they do that by boiling hydrogen. Like it goes through a whole process. It's called a steam methane reform process where they use natural gas. And, and this is what they're proposing is to create blue hydrogen. And that, you know, blue hydrogen comes in different colors based on how it's produced. as their fuel source. And as we all know, we might know, natural gas is considered a fossil fuel. And what is a fossil fuel? You know, it, um, it, it creates carbon into our atmosphere when you burn it. So, uh, and you know, with the green energy, clean energy push, they're pushing to get away from fossil fuels and getting more into green, clean, truly clean energies that are fossil free, that are carbon free, that, um, you know, are renewable, sustainable, uh, things like that. So to create pure hydrogen, they boil the water uh, to a high, high level, and it goes through that steam methane reform process in a hydrogen plant. And then they that's how they make the pure hydrogen. And then what these companies want to do is mix it with ammonia. This is based on their presentations mix it with ammonia, and they want to put the plant, the hydrogen plant, somewhere in or around Farmington, New Mexico, and then pipe it all the way down through our reservation, beginning coming into northern Navajo, going through western Navajo, and going out by, by Cameron. So the pipeline will start somewhere around Hogback, New Mexico, and come out by Cameron, Arizona, off the reservation and down into Phoenix, down into Yuma, Arizona, and then uh, down up towards um, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, to serve those cities and towns off the reservation. So that's the gist of the hydrogen development that they've been talking about. Um, and tell them about the community work that you've been doing to educate. Okay, so um, since about 2021, was it when Jessica first started? Um, it was during, or 2020 really, right? 2021. Yeah, so um, during President Nez's term, he, um, we understand that he signed some type of document, it might have been an MOU, with these hydrogen developers. Um, allowing them to do a feasibility study to, for the hydrogen development. And so since that time, um, my coworker, Jessica Kitso, who's also been in this educating about hydrogen, she's been out there um, educating communities about hydrogen and what the plans are from these developers. Um, and then in 2023, Three last year, I came on board with Tonejana um, as a community um, organizer, and I, we've been going out in the communities. I've been covering chapters in the northern agency, and Jessica has been covering chapters in the western agency. We've been educating our community members, both in English and in Navajo, about hydrogen, and um, telling about you know everything that the companies were saying. But we've also really been educating about the science, what the environmental scientists have been saying. And they've been saying that uh, blue hydrogen is not a solution for climate change, that it is not clean, that it is uh, not carbon free, and it's, it's not a solution for climate change. There's an organization called um, IEFA, and they are a an organization of um, environmental scientists, um, financial people that um, did a study on blue hydrogen. And um, I, I believe IEFA stands for uh, Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis. And they conducted a study that um, they completed last year in 2023. They studied blue hydrogen. And they said that blue hydrogen is not, um, it's not clean. It's not, you know, everything I was just saying, it's not clean. It is not carbon free. 
It is not sustainable, not renewable, and no uh, governments should fund it, and it is not a solution for climate change. So those are some of their, what came out of their study um, just last year, and I believe it was in October that they published that report. Can you mention who the company? There's several companies, but the main overarching company that is putting the funding into this is Blackstone Energy. And um, under them, subsidiaries of, of Blackstone are Hydrogen, are um, Greenview Logistics, LLC, um, Tallgrass Energy. Um, and then, of course, under them, it, you know, they've hired other companies like to do the, um, the feasibility studies and things like that. Um, on the New Mexico side, they were proposing to do an Escalante hydrogen plant in Pruitt, New Mexico, uh, and Tallgrass Energy owns about 75% of that one along with New Point Gas. Uh, Libertad is another company that was located in San Juan County, and, um, and then NAPI is another one that was proposing to uh, put a hydrogen plant at NAPI, uh, which is Navajo Agricultural Products Industry. And then Avangrid is another company near the Four Corners area that was wanting to um, be involved in this hydrogen. Um, on the Arizona side, um, there's, um, let's see, okay, so Blackstone, Tallgrass, Greenview. Uh, oh, and then on the Mexico side, there's also Four Corners Clean Energy Alliance. Um, and they have been, they are actually a nonprofit um, organization, but they're working closely with these companies. And um, they are really pushing for the hydrogen. And, you know, a lot of the people that are a part of this um, Four Corners Clean Energy Alliance is what they're called, um, are like, um, are, uh, they, they worked for Tallgrass, they worked for some of these companies. And then they are also have hired a lot of our Navajo former like council delegates like um, Mark Freeland um, and, and others that they have uh, recruited to go out into the communities and try to push hydrogen um, using our Navajo language. So that's what they've been doing. Um, in New Mexico, they were proposing the um, uh, hydrogen project. Uh, it was called the WISH the Western Interstate Hydrogen Hub, and then on the Arizona side, it was called the, the Shine, the Southwestern um, uh, Hydrogen. Um, there are a lot of uh, community resolutions that have been passed in opposition to hydrogen. Why do you think he left that off of his State of the Navajo Nation address yesterday? Yeah, that's what I was listening for when he um, did his State of the Nation on the 9th and then yesterday. I was listening for him to say something about hydrogen, but he did not say anything, um, not that I caught. Um, but I know the council delegates were questioning him about it, and of course he skirted around a lot of those issues. But I think um, we've not seen the document, but we've heard that when he came into office, he also signed some type of MOU with these companies to allow the feasibility studies to continue and to allow the, the hydrogen development to continue on Navajo. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like you mentioned, we have, um, they, they, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but we have 13, um, communities. Maybe just name them off. Okay. Okay. The hydrogen pipeline is gonna... Okay, so we have Gadi Aja, Red Mesa, Sweetwater, Mexican Water, Dinahozo, Kienta, Shanto, Tuanalia, Tuba City, uh, Coal Mine Canyon, and Cameron, and um, so all of these chapters are the affected communities that where the pipeline will go through. And of those 13, we have 11 resolutions that were approved opposing the hydrogen development. So the majority of these communities don't want it and don't want this explosive hydrogen pipeline to be going through their communities. They've said no, but yet these companies are still pushing. And our tribal leaders seem to be um, in support of it, and that's just wrong. You know. 
these are grassroots community people from these um, uh, from these areas, and they have said no, but they're dis disregarding what they are saying. They have said no by resolution, but our tribal leaders seem to be disregarding, and that's not right. Thank you, Eleanor. I just want to say one other thing about hydrogen is that, um, you know, I've been to some of these community meetings, and uh, one of the questions that um, I think really resonated with me the most is uh, elders asking if this is a fuel that can actually be used in the home. And we had to clarify and tell them that you can't use this fuel, and the companies don't intend to to um, distribute any of this fuel to to the communities or to the homes. That's not. It's a it's an industrial grade fuel, and it's it's going to be piped through the Navajo Nation and right out um, on the south uh, west side of the reservation and on to Yuma, Phoenix, and uh, ne places in Nevada. So. Uh, this is a fuel that cannot be used by the community. So we're basically just going to make way for the transportation of this and giving um, uh, thousands of acres of Navajo land away to the hydrogen company that wants to build a pipeline. So um, needless to say, we're, you know, educating the communities like Eleanor said and, and Jessica and others and uh, making sure that the people out there know the information before the companies come in and try to um, sell them the basically the project um, and so that's that's where this is today and so it would be you know I to 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 be fair I know that this project was started when um, President Nez was in office and there's been a change in administration now and now our president is um, Blue Nigren so you know this is a project that's been at least talked about since the last administration so it's I think it's really important that we get to the bottom of this it's a project that um, is going to require is going to be very labor intensive, um, very uh, energy intensive, and uh, very water intensive. So uh, that uh, that's you know so that's our um, little uh, segment this morning on hydrogen. Thanks, Eleanor, and we'll go ahead and get um, the next presentation ready. Um, so.